<laughs> grace, 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 grace. Right? We need it today. And what did I just hear about grace? Grace is getting a blessing where you don't deserve it, right? Mm. And mercy is not getting what you do deserve. So we need plenty of grace this morning. Blessings upon us, even though we don't deserve us. We're kind of a interesting group and we're muddling through all this transition and it's good to see everybody who is here and the sun is shining and I'd like to welcome you all to, to sacred ground uh, just a few reminders from the pulpit this morning tomorrow is Valentine's Day so don't forget that February 14th I said it last week and I I thought that last week was Super Bowl and no one corrected me so Tomorrow is Valentine's Day, and then Super Bowl is today, right? Got that. So 3.30. Lots of fun. There we go. All right, I'm going to ask for a show of hands. Who's rooting for the Bengals? There's a few hands. Three. How about the Rams? One. Three to one. And how many don't care? How many don't care? We're trying to decide here. in the game is at 3.30 So, following our worship, uh, Pastor James is going to be delivering the message, and we pray for him. And then following all of that, we have potluck today, and we're following that with a business meeting. So, we're, we're trying to find our vision all together. All together. We're trying to put it together. So, if you can, you want some input as to where we're at and where we're going, the business meeting today following the potluck would be pretty important. Um, we also, I don't know that he will be here, but um, I've invited Rob Walker as a special guest. He is the <coughs> Northwest Baptist Convention. That's a part of where we are. He's like the church health and evangelism director. And he, I talked to him on the phone, and he said, well, I'm going to be speaking at the, the Pacific Baptist in Lincoln City. And he said, he wanted to get together for dinner. I said, well, there's no place in Selects on Sunday that you can eat. I said, but wait a minute. Kelly reminded me, we're having a potluck and a business meeting. So he's going to try to be here. So uh, a supervisor from the convention of which we are a part, I've invited him. And uh, also I'd like to say welcome to Mike and Mickey. They were here singing before. And Mike is helping us with our sound because we have a powerful bunch of equipment that Dave has been faithfully working on and Mike's going to help us fine tune it. And so audio first and video, we paid you know, some good dollars for this system so we're trying to learn how to use it. Mike has the ability to do that. So welcome to our church and any visitors who may be here. almost want to call you guys visitors, but you're not. Good to see you. <laughs> also want to announce that uh, one of our Local residents, everybody, anybody remember Karen? Yeah. We used to yell at her dogs just down the street. Karen, her last name is Nephew. She passed away. And when we go to the Assembly of God, Pastor Mike Skagg says, I never met her, but I loved it when she'd yell at her dogs. Get in here! <laughs> and so she is, she's now in heaven. And there will be a service for her in Logston, and I think it's February 19th. Again, welcome to you all. Uh, just a reminder that we are a, a blended family. We really are. We are united by our Father in Heaven, Jesus our Savior, and the Ruach HaKodesh, the Holy Spirit, living and dwelling in us. What a privilege that is. And He does that in many people and fellowships across this planet. So we welcome... You, Father, most of all, we thank you that you have brought us together to sing praises to your name. We know that when we praise your name, the enemy has to flee, has to scatter, darkness has to scatter. We thank you for your grace, giving us blessings where we don't deserve it, and giving us your mercy, Lord, not giving us what we do deserve. You're so kind to us, you're so loving, and you tell us to be the same, and you tell us that we need to love you first, love you first, and then love the neighborhood, love others. And we want to do that as best we can. So take who we are, be glorified in it, 
Have your way with us today. In Jesus' name. Oh, amen. amen. Almost forgot. Rob and I have been getting together and uh, thinking about this. Would you like to go out to lunch with us? <laughs> he, you know how someone invites you to lunch? Well, yeah. We're going to have a hot dog lunch on Wednesday. We're going to open up the fire pit and we're going to barbecue hot dogs. So at noon, it's just like we're going to do it. We're going we're gonna to start a fire at noon on Wednesday. And if you're going to come, maybe bring a package of hot dogs. And if you don't have to open them, you can take them home. And a package of buns. And if, you, again, you don't use them, you can take them at home. And they're, they're good for a couple of weeks, right? <laughs> so hot dog lunch, noon here in the yard. And we'll get some pleasant aroma going with hot dogs cooking. So noon on Wednesday, hot dog lunch. I'll bring this more. You're invited. And bring chairs. If you want, bring chairs. Like lawn chairs. Because we don't have any lights out there. But 12 o'clock on Wednesday. Well, it's a... I, I saw a 40% chance of rain, but the weather forecast today said rain the next couple of days, and it should be good on Wednesday. So, <laughs> you know, this is the rain. Yeah. yeah. It's beautiful right now. Wear your hat. <laughs> all right. And uh, thank you, Sherry, for handing out the bulletins, and pay attention to all the stuff that's in there. Uh, we're trying to do something all the time, and you don't have to participate all the time, but... For new believers, when they start coming in, we want to say, you can come here, you can come here, you can do this, and come here. That's what we need to be focused on, right? So pay attention to the bullets and, and let's, let's worship. Can we get that door closed? Thank you. I got it. Can we get that door closed? All right. Let's get a beat going. Where are you going? Happy, 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 happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Can you hear the right key? Happy, 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 happy is the people whose God is the Lord. Happy, 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 happy is the people whose God is the Lord. My father loves me. 
be gone. Oppression be gone in Jesus' name. Depression be gone in Jesus' name. The joy of the Lord is my strength. That's what this month is all about. The joy of the Lord is my strength.
Helen's sister. Yes. And might I ask a prayer for our mother, Jeanette Giddings? She's 96, young, and she's on her final walk right now to meet her Lord, which she so beautifully believes in. So we are here, and she is <clears throat> most loved. And if we could have a prayer as she is walking her way to her Lord right now as we speak. Father, we thank you for this precious life. We thank you for this precious mother, grandmother, probably great grand, not great great grandmother. <laughs> Lord, thank you for her. Thank you for her journey. Thank you that you are with her. Thank you that you are her God. Thank you that you are her creator and that you have been her all. Lord, thank you that she acknowledged you. She's ready to be with you forever and forever and forever and forever. And bless the family, Lord, as they surround her with love, tenderness, and your great grace flow, your great mercy, Lord. Thank you for your forgiveness. Thank you for the blood of the Lamb over her. Thank you. When peace like a river attended my way, when sorrow
hymns. I love hymns. And the, the newer ones that we've written, and this is one that Dan wrote long ago. Great Spirit, you are welcome here. Oh, Great Spirit.
trail for each one of us. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the chief. Thank you, Jesus, that you are the Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you have us all in your hands. You are firmly in charge. You are the chief, the great chief, the warrior that laid his life down for us. We're so thankful. All that we do, praise you. But the reason he did 
or he does what he does is to set up an example to become what he is. He doesn't want us want to just lavish us in love. He wants to transform us in love. God's love shown through Scripture. We go right back to Exodus chapter 34 where he describes himself to Moses. So as the Lord passed in front of him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord is compassionate, compassionate, gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love and truth, maintaining faithful love for thousands of generations, forgiving iniquity, rebellion, and sin. Chapter 34, verses 6 through 7, he describes himself to Moses. Now we're going to go right back into the New Testament. There is so much scripture we can share about what God's love is. First one I want to talk about, you guys all know, John 3, 16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Unconditional. He loved us first. Romans 5, 8 talks about that. And then he demonstrated for a while we were still helpless. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. For This is in verse 6, chapter Romans chapter 5, verses 6 through 8. At the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Verse 7, for rarely will someone die for just a person. Though, the good, though for a good person, perhaps... Someone might dare to die. But God proves or demonstrates His own love for us and while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Even when we didn't care or we were naive and we didn't even know it. His love, unconditional, went seeking for us, not us seeking Him. So God demonstrates His love. You would go to 1 John 4, 7, and 8. Beloved, let us love one another, for love is God, and everyone that loveth is born of God and knows God. He that loveth not, know not love, because God is love. Amen. Then you go back to the definition of what a God they love is in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Verse 4, love is patient, love is kind, love does not envy, it does not boast, it is not arrogant, it is not or not proud, it is not rude, it is not self-seeking, it is not irritable, and it does not, it keeps no record of wrongs. That's God's love. That's a godly love. Love finds no joy in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. My God is awesome. The Lord God Almighty has love for us beyond what we can comprehend. And nothing can separate that love.
It's funny because you can even look in Galatians chapter. Um, sorry. Galatians chapter 5, verse 22, and it talks about the fruit of the Spirit. What's the first thing? Love. Is that coincidence? No. Because God is love. It is not a coincidence. God is love. And we need to be more like Him and less like us. And going back and, and ridiculing one another, judging one another, we should come with love and confront one another with love, not judgment. Because we're no different in the eyes of God when it comes to sin in our own lives. It's amazing what Christ said for husbands to do, for God. It says, husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her. I'm calling you men out. <laughs> this, I'm going to tell you right now, I didn't want to do this. I, don't, I will rock the boat if I know what I want to talk about. But when it's Christ using me, the Holy Spirit using me, I'm a little scared to step on people's toes. But not today. I'm about to trip over that. Moved up a little far. We are supposed to emulate. We're supposed to follow the example of Christ and what He did for the church. He died for us. He hung on that cross. There was a time that He said, "Luke." Lord, take this cup from me. Not my will, but your will be done. So his love still, I'm going. And even when he got whipped, he still carried that cross. Even to the point where he couldn't carry it any longer and someone else carried it for him. That shows love. Unconditional love. Love that is willing to go the distance and into the dark and grab and pull out those who are lost. It goes on and says, verse 26 of chapter 5 of Ephesians. To make her holy, cleansing her with washings of water by the word. He did this to present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or anything like that, but holy and blameless. In the same way, husbands are to love their wives as their own bodies. Christ loved the church, went all the way out to give himself up. So that we may have a relationship with the creator of this world. Sometimes we get a little bit arrogant saying, hey, look what I, cre I created. I created and used two things to bring something together and make it better. Do you realize that God didn't use anything and He created everything out of nothing? We have a we honor a lot of things. But the most the thing that I've been researching most is the unknown soul, the tomb of the unknown soul. And what they do, 21 steps. To one side, there's a mat, black mat. 
They turn to the east, 21 seconds. Turn to the north, 21 seconds. Go back, 21. The significance of 21 is a 21 gun salute to the soldiers who have paid the ultimate price. That's the highest regard that someone can get. Highest reward. And we give honor to them who have died, but have they ever rose again? No. We should be giving more honor, more love, more everything to God, to Christ. We must emulate Him. Because if people see God's love in us because we are looking to Him, they will follow. Wow, really? Trip over that. <laughs> love. <coughs> There's different types of love. Four different types of love. But the one we're talking about today is God. Unconditional. And men, you can give that unconditional love to your wife. Because the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you are seeking God, if you are reading God's Word, and I, I'm going to tell you something. I've been reading God's Word ever since I was had the COVID. Listening to it. Reading. And I've been attacked more and more and more all the way up until last night. Because I did, I did not know what I was going to be talking about, how the Lord was going to use it. And I'm like, Lord, I'm at a loss. Well, I don't have anything written down. And at 12.52 after I got, I got done talking to my adopted son that is going through some serious issues right now, he said, yeah, just what you just told me. You can use that. And I said, what did I tell you? <laughs> because it was the Holy Spirit that yes. spoke through me. Yes, amen. And with that being said right there, the Lord woke me up and said, this is what I want you to do. Right when I got off there, I'm like, Lord, what did I say? Mm -hmm. What did I share with him? Romans talks about transing, transforming our minds. Not to be conformed with this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our, of our minds. And that's God's word. We need to be renewed daily. Daily. That shows our dedication. That shows that we honor God. That shows that we love God. When we do the things that God wants us to do, not what we want to do, or what we may think God wants us to do, we do because God loved us. Died for us. Gave it all for us. So why don't we do the same thing for Him? Give all to God. Proverbs 3, 5, 6 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. And lean not on your own understanding. And in all your ways, acknowledge Him. Meaning, Lord, is this, pray for this. Is this where I'm supposed to go? I'm praying. I'm asking you. Is this where I'm supposed to go? And He will direct your path. And He will make your path straight. But the first thing it says, trust the Lord. How do you trust in the Lord? How do you trust the Lord? Because you see what the Lord is. He's consistent. And He's unconditional showing love to you. And when someone unconditionally shows love to you, you are drawn to them. And you want to emulate them. You want to follow you want to become more like.
that last one right there with the fusions. Hit me hard. Because I need to be doing that. Unconditionally towards my wife, Rebecca. Just as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, I need to do the same thing. And just as I'm studying God's word, I need to be studying my wife. Learning more and more. As if I'm dating all over again. I did a little fun little thing this morning. I don't know, she didn't think it was funny at first. <laughs> and I called her up on the phone, and her phone was on sale. She says, why did you call me? I said, well, it didn't work out. I said, you didn't have the phone. She said, that was, I'll talk to you later about it. She had to go to, the, to town, and so I called her up. Well, she is in town. She goes, what do you want? I said, is this Rebecca Morton? Yes, it is. This is James Morton. I was wondering if I could ask you out for a date tomorrow. <laughs> um, trying to bring back that romantic side of me. Doing things, planning things, stuff like that. Now, this is not about me. But, this is about what God is doing in my heart and in my life. The love He has shown me that I want to emulate, that I want to show, that I want to learn from. And the more that you follow someone who has unconditional love, the more you will become like. And the only one that shows unconditional love all the time is God. Because okay. we don't, all the time, show up in yep. love. <laughs> so my conclusion, the first thing I gave you was God dropping the cross. What if he did? What if, could you imagine him doing that? There is no way I could ever imagine him doing that. Be rest assured that he carried that cross. He hung on that cross. Died and rose again in three days. And he's sitting at the right hand of the Father. Lord. Lord. <laughs> and he will come back again. He will set up his kingdom. And there's no, no one going to overthrow it. <laughs> Is that someone you should be following? Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. That's between you and God. If you can openly say that, then there you go. You got it. Because it is all about expressing, I can follow God. Are you willing to go to even death? That's the big question. Are you willing to stand where no one else can stand Because if you are, God will give you the power to do so. Because man can, I can't say this, but completely right. But I've read that man can kill your body, but he can't kill your soul. Mm. challenge to you guys and I'll close with this. <laughs> Seek God with all your heart while he may be found. Seek him like he never sought something before. 
like a treasure that you have never looked for, but you've heard about. That very love that you want to have, that you want to display, that you want to show others, is the very <laughs> essence of God. The Creator that we talked about and we sung about. It's amazing what God does. Even up to the last minutes before you step up to this pole. Or speak into someone's life. So I challenge you guys, seek God with all your heart. Make that commitment. Be more like Christ. Rock the boat. Even sometimes capsize it. Because there's some people that need to be in the water. That is true. So, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for everything that you've done for us. Thank you for speaking to me, Lord. Giving me something to say. It's all praise and honor and glory to you. And I ask, Lord, that you just give us a great week. Bless us. Keep us humble. And ultimately, Lord, bless this food that we're about to have. And the fellowship that we do have with one another, strengthen it with your love, Lord. Help us to love one another unconditionally. As we look to you as our example. It's in your name that I pray. Amen. Amen.